Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 10 out of Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, I'm going to be showing y'all one of the many directions life can take you when you involve yourself with crime. And in this person's case, he got turned out inside of prison. Luke Irons is a man whose mugshot should be seen by every teen and young adult considering a life of crime. At the age of 23, Luke was convicted of 34 felonies after a crime spree lasting from 2004 to 2007 and starting at just 17 years old. This kid's parents must have bought him every Grand Theft Auto game because he was Claude, Tommy, and CJ all in one. Fast forward, he goes to prison and turns to Sid from Toy Story. But let me tell you what type of shit this kid was into. By 19, he committed two burglaries, was caught nose deep in coke twice, then got caught selling coke twice. So to avoid getting caught a third time, he decided to haul ass on the police in a stolen car, leading to a fleeing and eluding conviction with the Grand Theft Auto sprinkled on top. But he was far from done. An aggravated battery with a deadly weapon to spice things up. Another stolen car just for fun. And five more cocaine charges to get his blood pumping. By 20, he'd commit three burglaries. One of which was armed. Another aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Two batteries on a person age 65 or older. Three home invasions. A burglary assault. Carjacking with a deadly weapon. I mean, this kid was just terrorizing the senior citizen community and beating the shit out of any grandparents he ran into. The deadly weapon must have been the cane he snatched from his 65 years or older victims, and this kid had more batteries than fucking Duracell. A year later, he'd be charged with vehicular manslaughter, and I don't know how the fuck he was even free to run over someone to begin with, but this kid had the streets so hot by 22, his eyebrows were nearly burnt off and it wasn't until 2010 he'd be sentenced for all of his crimes. Now this wasn't one neighborhood, one city, or one county. Luke rampaged through five different counties, taking the courts three years to sentence him in all five. I've seen it time and time again. Badass white kids racking up charges, victimizing society's weakest and thinking they're tough shit until they pull up to reception. Luke was the name on his ID, but inmates called him Star. The name came with the tattooed eyebrows and a pair of extra tight ass pants before he was able to find glasses and tattooed eyeliner. Star got turned out, and after years of God knows what, he decided to tat a lot more shit on his face and even had the nerve to thicken his eyebrows like anybody's gonna forget what he looked like before. But this is the reality of prison. This is what living that life gets you. And Star, he's 33 right now. And his release date is 2085, which means he doesn't go home until he's fucking 98. Now I can't even begin to tell you how many suburban warriors I met inside of prison where they would be inside of a, you know, a good dorm, a honor dorm, or a faith-based dorm. And they're telling you about all the shit they did on the street. Oh, I was doing mad burglaries. I was doing robberies. Da, 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 da. And come to find out, they had charges like this buffoon. You fucking robbed and beat up old people. You went in their house. You hit them. You did this. You did that. It's the stupidest fucking shit to lose your entire life over. And this goofy goober, you can just look at him and tell... He's never been about that life. Like what, you feel badass when you're hyped up on coke? Everybody does. I'll turn into fucking John Wick with a bump and two guns. But I'm just saying, you can throw your whole life away from trying to be something, from trying to portray an image of doing things that you feel will make you feel like a fucking badass, and then you end up in prison. You might see somebody you knew, and when you see him, he's got the same tatted on eyebrows, he's got a little stank ass walk, a whole new talk, everything's changed about him, and he goes by a completely different name. You might be like, yo, Luke, he don't even respond to that. Yo, Star, hey, like that's the that's the type of shit you're gonna see in prison, and it's, it's relevant on every single compound. These young, dumb kids go in there 
thinking that that status that they fought so hard to get is going to maintain any form of respect inside of prison. No one cares about that. You ran up on an old person, run up on a gangster in him. Now this dude doesn't get out until fucking forever, right? He's not coming home anytime soon. And even if he starts appealing his case, he has five different counties, countless charges, 34 different charges. He's not coming back off of all that shit. And he knows it. And I feel like that's why he redesigned his whole face. Another reason he could possibly have gotten tired of what's going on and what's happening and being treated like a female inside a prison. And there was someone else that I knew that was exactly like that. When I met him, he wasn't on none of that. He was a normal looking dude. He was the only Asian I came across inside of the Florida Department of Corrections. This was at Appalachian Correctional, I-4, same quad as me. Dude had the rawest back tattoo I ever seen. He paid $600 for it. If you've ever been locked up, $50 will get you sleeved up. To pay $600, this artist, was insane, he truly was. It looked like he got the work done in the street. It was just this crazy, insane piece on his back. And then inside of like symbolisms, it said cream, cash rules, everything around me. But cream for him might have meant something a little bit fucking different because come to find out, his name was China on a different compound. China, the only Chinese dude I ever met. His nickname was China and he used to do the whole thing, the funny walk, the funny talk, all that shit. I guess he got tired of it. And you know, he ended up stabbing somebody, he stabbed his bunkie inside of the dorm. And it was a bloody mess. And all they did was they shut the door and they took them out. But I remember walking past the cell, looking in, there was blood coming out of the cell and there's blood all over the fucking floor. You know what I mean? He wet his bunkie up for whatever reason. And it's not like he acted like he was a tough guy. But he got tired of living that life, and I believe he had a life sentence, he's never going home. So in this kid's case, he thickens his eyebrows and puts a whole bunch of other shit to try to, you know, cover up his past. Maybe he's tired of living how he was living in there, and he understands he's never going home, and he's starting to stand up for himself. But by that point, that kid is so far gone mentally from who he was when he was in society, that if you released him back into society, he might be too shot out to really be able to adjust. He might be too far gone. When people get victimized like that, they they break, their spirit is broken. And this is something that, you know, I don't just bring on these stories to make fun of people and how ridiculous they look, but the reality of it is, sadly, out of all the viewers that I have, there's a percentage of y'all that would end up just like this. And it's important to show y'all this type of shit. One, because it could either become you. Or two, if you go to prison, these are the type of goofy motherfuckers you're gonna be around. At the end of the day, prison is not a fucking place. It's not an award ceremony. It's not where you go, you know, to, to be welcomed in. It's not where you go for achieving a good status. This is the home of the fuck ups. Whatever state you're in, that's the worst people in that state. It's not nothing to be proud of. It's not nobody in there shit. Nothing you do in there matters when you come home. All of that shit just ends. If you're lucky, you can make a channel about it and speak on your fucking experience. But if you can't write it down on a job application, if you can't take it to the bank and cash it, it ain't worth shit. But hey, it's 1090J. I'm rocking with Charlie. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.